Howdy y'all, this is Ethan Von Real, back at it again with more coming out on top, and this time around we're going to go ahead and complete the second ending of the Brofinder date with Oz and Pete. So if you don't remember, or you haven't watched the previous part, we are on a date with a couple, Pete and Oz. And in the last part, we focused our attentions on Pete and learned that he loves to smoke weed and be cucked. And I don't mean that fucking ironically. That motherfucker told us that he wants us to cuck him. Um, and we did it. We did it because that's what the game demanded. But I personally had some feelings about that. So I took a two-month hiatus from recording videos because I was spiritually cleansing myself. But I'm back. I'm back and ready to record more. And so... This time around, we are going to be talking up Oz. almost forgot his name for a second. Sorry about that. I'm going to be talking up Oz, and we are going to learn that he has a few apprehensions about being on this date with us, because uh, if you couldn't tell, he already got a man, so uh, he's a little bit confused why all three of us are on a date together when he already has a romantic partner. But we're going to figure that out and more in this episode of Coming Out top thumbs up um so let's go ahead and get into it you give pete your order oz excuses himself to go to the restroom so the difference between this and pete's part as i mentioned in the previous video is that you just completely talk to oz the whole time so anytime we have the option of following oz or interacting with him we're gonna go ahead and do it so follow oz to the restroom oz disappears through a door in the corner of the club you follow, swinging the door open to reveal him at the sink, splashing water on his face. He stares into the mirror, muttering to himself. Same book, same page. He wipes himself off with a paper towel, then jumps when he sees you. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. Oh, <laughs> I've just always been a little bit jumpy. Oz shrugs and smiles in a nervous way that doesn't leave you convinced. So... In order to get the proper ending, we need to uh, just kind of gently nudge him and figure out what's going on. We don't want to be curt with him by pissing aggressively, uh, and we don't want to basically be too sexually forward. So, we are going to ask how everything is. Uh, I hope everything is okay. What? Yeah, everything's cool. Just having fun at the old dance club. Woo! So, again, don't be sexual. Is there something I'm doing wrong or not doing? Nope, everything's great. I'm perfectly cool with all of this. Okay, just making sure. I thought we were supposed to, you know, uh, communicate and stuff. Right. Thanks, but everything's good, man. I'm gonna go back to the bar now. He hurries off, almost crashing into another club goer as he walks out. Feeling unsettled by Oz's abrupt departure, you return to the bar. Just as you rejoin Oz and Pete, a new track starts pounding through the club speakers. Hey Oz, don't you love this song? Uh, I don't know, I'm kinda over it. What? You were just telling me mere hours ago you were trying to hunt it down. Don't tell me you've already changed your mind about it. Who changes their mind about anything so quickly? Maybe I do. Come on, you two, let's dance. Before either of you can respond, Pete grabs Oz's hand and yours, and pulls both of you towards the middle of the dance floor. At first, the three of you dance in a circle. After a minute, Pete playfully moves in close behind you, while Oz moves in front. You feel yourself grow warm from the proximity of their bodies. The combination of the dancing, the alcohol, Oz's broad shoulders, and Pete's tall, lanky build is making you increasingly aroused. You don't know how long you've danced, you only know that you're getting sweaty, even a little dizzy as your senses go into overload, gazing back and forth between the two of them. You smile at Oz, he smiles back at you, he seems to be growing more relaxed. You note Oz's butt looks fantastic in his jeans, the sweat on Pete's neck glistens in the neon light. You restrain yourself from looking at him right there and then. You know, well, our character really needs a bit more people training, because you really should not lick people in public. Anyway. Uh, after a few more songs, Pete stops dancing and excuses himself to go to the bathroom. Oz says he's going to the bar.
bar to get some water. So again, we need to keep following Oz. So, uh, what do you do outside of working at the radio station? Well, when I'm not hanging out with Pete, I'm usually practicing guitar playing with my band. Oh, sweet, you have a band? What's the name? A gathering of fine gentlemen. And what kind of music do y'all make? Well, we play a kind of funked out pop rap beat with a heavy jazz influence mixed with a death metal and trap twist. Well, that actually sounds pretty intense, so I'll have to come and see you play. Hey Mark, I didn't mean to make you feel kinda awkward after what happened in the bathroom. I'm just kinda having second thoughts here. I guess that's understandable. Are you worried this is gonna jeopardize what you guys have? Not exactly. I know Pete adores me. What we have is amazing. I've never had a reason to doubt him after all these years. And I know intellectually most people aren't going to be sexually attracted to one single person for their entire lives, but still, all these ideas we get from movies and TV and music and just everywhere. I guess I feel like I'm supposed to be ashamed, like I'm not enough for him, you know? Like he needs a threesome with different dudes because I'm not enough. I know I'm being silly, but have you talked to him about this? <laughs> no, no, of course not, no. Yeah, yeah, I know we gave you the whole communication spiel earlier. In most areas of our lives, we really are honest and open, but this area... I don't know. Pete should really know you don't want to do this, man. No, that's the thing. I do, I do want to do this, but I'm just feeling a little bit insecure. In fact, I have a very specific fantasy we could only do with a third. Oh, and what would that be? I mean, Pete was in the cucking, and I'm really hoping this one isn't in a double fisting, because I'm not ready for that yet. It's too much of a commitment. I don't know if I'm ready to share that yet. Uh, so, we need to opt to tell Oz an embarrassing fetish of our own. What that means is that we need to tell him the truth. So you want to know what turns me on? Oz perks up. No, what? I get turned on by my team getting on the fucking objective. Um, because I've been playing a lot of Overwatch lately and that is tilting the shit out of me um, and in fact making me not want to play that goddamn game anymore because people don't believe in objectives. But anyway. I'm done being passive-aggressive for a bit, a little bit. You know, I've never acted on it, of course, but there are days when it's all I can think about. Everything I look at will remind me of the way my team doesn't get on the fucking objective. I, I don't know what to say. Yeah, I feel pretty silly telling anyone about it. But hey, that's human sexuality, right? Can anyone explain it? Winky face. Back on the dance floor, you resume your spot. Okay, just one more song, guys. As Oz and Pete dance beside you, you feel yourself growing warm again, from the exertion and the nearness of their bodies. Pete is very friendly and visible with you. You touch one another's arms, waists, and shoulders, getting into each other as the music thumps away. Hands still around your waist, he kisses Oz, wanting to pull your trio closer together. So, again, we gotta really hit it home. Let's flirt with Oz. You touch Oz's cheek and turn him so his lips align with yours. Then deliver a deep kiss. He seems surprised. You glance over at Pete, who watches you kiss him, deeply interested. Finally breaking the kiss, Oz grins and backs into you. He pauses, feeling your heart on, and blushes. You see Oz say something to Pete his words drowned out by the roar of the music. Pete nods, leans towards you, his mouth near your ear, his breath tickling and turning you on further. We'd like you to come back home with us, Mark. You up for it? So, very obviously, we need to go home with them. So, if you're seeing this option, that means you've correctly done everything so far, and that you're on your way to the second not-safe-for-work ending of the state. So, we need to go ahead and follow them. 
You give Oz a quick glance. He tosses you a cute smile that makes you grin from ear to ear. Dodging sweaty, dancing bodies, you work your way outside. Your ears still ringing, you follow their car home to their apartment on the outskirts of Palm Valley. Pete unlocks the door and leads you inside. Nice place. Thanks. I don't think it's changed much from when it was built in the 60s. I really like the art you have on the walls. Some of those are actually Pete's. Aren't they amazing? Oh, the ones on that wall are mine, and on the far wall are a bunch of artists I admire. Damn, you've got skills. You should see Pete's comics, especially the one... Oh, God, let's not talk about that, Oz. But... Shh. <sighs> Look, there's this comic I did from way, way back. It was an abomination, and we'll just pretend it never happened. Pete chuckles. He goes over to the cabinet and opens a drawer. You watch Oz roll his eyes and head towards the doorway. Pete turns away from the cabinet. You see him light a joint. Sorry, Oz. Just one, okay? Fine, but I'm going to hang out in the bedroom for a bit. Pete offers you the joint. Oz hates this stuff, and I try not to do it too often. It's the smell that's pure evil. Just make sure you open the window, Petey. Mark, you know you want to hang out with me in the bedroom and get away from that smoke. Hearing the edge in his voice, you decide to follow Oz, curious. As you walk into the small bedroom, you stare at the posters on the wall, noting the ones with Pete's name signed at the bottom. You also note the guitar in the corner. So, uh, how did you two meet? At one of your concerts? Huh, <laughs> like a groovy sex scenario? Nah, it was actually the other way around. It was actually because of his old webcomic, The Rattler. Oh, wow, what was it about? It was about this nude superhero with a snake rattle attached to his penis. Sounds about right up my alley. Pete thinks it's the most embarrassing thing he's ever done, but I don't see what the big deal is. It was a personal project, and it was pretty weird and funny. The protagonist would become aroused right before taking the bad guys down. His rattle would shake and he'd whisper, Tss! Then he'd give the baddies the old one-two boom pow, if you know what I mean winky face. He abandoned it after a few chapters, and it just sat on the website. I was heavily invested in the story by that point, so I sent him an email asking if he was going to finish it. He was really shocked anybody even knew it existed, let alone was reading the thing. That scenario actually is not too unfamiliar with me. I've actually known a few people who've kind of met romantic partners or had online relationships with people they've met through stuff like that. The internet really is wonderful, but anyway, we'll talk about that later. Uh, he was really shocked anybody even knew it existed, let alone was reading the thing. So we started emailing each other, and we met in person, and that was three years ago. Oh man, what a cute story. I know, right? Well, anyway, I'm glad you joined me in the bedroom, Mark. Uh-huh. I decided I definitely want to do this with you and Pete. Sweet but there's this specific thing I want to do. I'm not going to get made into a hand puppet, am I? And I honestly don't know why it's easier to tell you these things, but look, uh, maybe you just care less what someone else you just met thinks of you. Yeah, but it's not just that. You also seem so open, like no judgment. I mean, you shared your my team getting on the fucking objective fetish with me. No judgment here. Judging is for total losers. So, uh... I'm gonna be real with you. I'd really love to feel Pete's cock against my cock. Inside of someone. I know this sounds crazy, but I think it'd be so intimate. Ah, the old DP. There's nothing to be ashamed about. I mean, is that even a fetish? It's more just like uh, another position, right? So, what would be really funny, um, and really amazing is, actually, let me back up. So, if you don't remember, at this point in the story, Super Swag is still canically a virgin. Our protagonist is a virgin. And for him to get DP'd on his first sexual experience, I feel like it would be really funny if you said yes, 
and you just got like instantly got a game over option the second they tried to put it in you and you just died and the game shut down and it deleted itself from your computer for thinking that was a good idea. But um I'm not making this game so we're going to see how this goes. Perhaps I've never told Pete though. Why not? Because I wasn't sure about how I felt about the whole thing. Ah uh, but I think I'm okay with it now, and now that it's finally happening. <clears throat> so very logically, if you want to continue on with this and be made into a human shish kebab, you're going to need to volunteer. Whoa, seriously? You really think you could handle it? We'll have to take it slow for sure, but yeah, I'm down. Oh my god, well, we'll take it really slow. We should get started soon then. Like when? How about now? You and Oz approach each other, your heads leaning in, your mouths meeting in a kiss. You reach around his waist with one hand, you slide the other hand down his back, feeling the swell of his muscles, warm and solid under your fingertips. Oh sure, just get started without me, why don't you? I was just about to call you over, dummy. You see, or you look up to see Pete walk into the broom. He starts kissing your neck then the spot behind Oz's ear. Your cock starts to throb. So if you can't tell, um, we are halfway into being um, decimated. So I am going to cut the video here, um, and we are going to meet back after we presumably get obliterated, but in the romantic, sexual, platonic, having a threesome with two people we've just met way. So... I'll catch y'all in just a bit, okay? All right, so that was quite a journey. Uh, we got to experience the joy of being destroyed by two folks we only met a few hours ago, and that is totally fine, because that's how it was meant to be. That's what God intended. But uh, anyway, if you're interested in seeing the Not Safe for Work scenes, there's actually going to be a download link in the description. So instead of posting them on YouTube, or not YouTube, instead of posting them on Tumblr like I used to, um, they're going to be available through Mediafire. The reason for that is they always get taken down when they're on Tumblr. Um, they're really cracking down on not safe for work videos. And it is very hard to find a video hosting site that will allow um, me to post not safe for work content. So uh, I'm just going to give them to you to download. Let me know if that works out for y'all or if you have any other suggestions. There are going to be two download links. The first one is going to say... Oz and Pete, um, sex only or sex scene only, and what that means basically is it's just going to be the not safe for work images. The reason that I'm doing it that way is because very clearly some of y'all are just using that for your spank bank or whatever, and that's fine. Um, the other download link is going to be Oz and Pete, uh, full not safe for work scene. And that one is going to have all the dialogue in addition to the images too, because I know some of y'all like that. Finally, don't forget not to check this out if you're under 18. I don't want y'all getting corrupted. And now we need to go ahead and end the video. So, <clears throat> the three of you lie back in bed. You find yourself comfortably sandwiched between Oz and Pete. Pete leans over and gives Oz a kiss. Then you. So, that just happened. Oh my god. You okay, Mark? Honestly, we're probably trying to make sure that our soul doesn't fall out of our booty hole after what just happened to us. Um, Mark? Oh, I think he's shell-shocked. Dot dot dot. I'm just gonna find some place to lie down for a little while. You're already laying down. Right. We'd like to call you, uh, <laughs> we'd like to call you again sometime. How does that sound, Mark? I... I'm it. Winky face. Petey, you should do another superhero comic. Mark Matthews, the man who could take two cocks at one. Oh my god, that's so inappropriate. I would read that, though. A true hero if there ever was one. So you probably can tell um, I'm being so unprofessional. I forgot to rename our player character Super Swag Johnson. He has the default name, Matt Matthews. But it don't matter. Um, y'all got to see the wonderful gay times that y'all been waiting for. So anyway, um, I'm going to work on the last Bro Finder date. I don't even remember the name of the guy that it's with, but I'll get that done. It's probably going to maybe be a little bit 
later, maybe three or four days, just because I'm actually wrapping up a final exam, and that is going to be done on Monday, and I don't want to get too distracted from getting that complete, because that's more important than this, sadly. Um, but I am going to be making videos again. I actually already started the recording for the next guy, um, so I promise you, you won't have to wait that long. And now that I have the media fire thing figured out, I'm actually going to slowly start um, uploading the not safe for work scenes from the previous episodes, um, because some of them did get deleted from Tumblr. But anyway, thank y'all for watching. I appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, and if you like my content, feel free to also check out my Tumblr. I'll probably link that in the description also. And then finally, have a good one, y'all. Thumbs up. Goodbye.